Michael Van Runkle here for HotCars.com here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida with this insane Jeep-faced Apocalypse 6x6. Now you might have seen one of these recently on Jay Leno's garage, but Jay only got to drive the Corvette LS3 SWAT one. This one has a 750 horsepower Hellcat Hemi. It'll run you 150 to 200 grand from a company called Apocalypse 6x6 sort of in partnership with SoFlo Jeeps here in Fort Lauderdale. It's got the 6x6 conversion, the Hemi Hellcat. It's got an infrared camera on top that allows for thermal imaging on a center-mounted custom console and automatic running boards. So let's hop behind the wheel. I'll walk you through all the mechanical and custom modifications that make this thing drive almost like a brand new truck. For now, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Joe, when he started SoFlo Jeeps, he really thought that he was just gonna be doing like 20 to $25,000 Jeep builds. But the customer base wanted more. And that led to the Apocalypse 6x6 eventually. He's also done a 6x6 Mercedes G-Wagon. He's done the 6x6 T-Rex now. He's actually on his third one of those. These things are aggressive to the point of being cartoonish, but the build quality speaks for itself and they're shipping them all over the world. This is the first Apocalypse 6x6 to be finished in this shade of white. That exterior paint is a Kevlar Line-X liner that they add a little bit of extra UV protection to, and it gives it great texture, and they told me it's super durable. They actually showed me in the shop a tailgate that someone had totally dinged up, and though the tailgate itself was dented, you literally could not see any damage to the Line-X paint. So that means that the exterior is pretty durable. If you do take it off-roading and you happen to hit any branches or bushes and get some of the desert pinstripes, that probably won't happen because this stuff is tough. You've got the custom hood design. That's fiberglass. You've got the custom fender flares, the windshield cowl, the massive trunk extension that's really a truck bed with the angular sort of cabin cover, which is actually pretty cool. It rolls up. It's metal covered in leather and they keep a little strap so you can pull it down for yourself when you want to close it. The truck bed is now almost eight feet long, which is really what Jeep should have done with the Gladiator from the factory. It's kind of surprising that they haven't done a two-door Gladiator with a long bed because that would be crazy popular with the Overland community. The problem with the five-foot bed that's currently on the Gladiator is even with the tailgate down, it's really not long enough for comfortable sleeping. So this thing's got an eight foot bed and Joe plans to crank out an apocalypse six by six overlanding build soon with a toilet, with AC, with solar panels, a big box, and it's got a full sleeping compartment as well for a full size adult. The infrared camera is pretty crazy. It's actually developed for marine use for fishing, but what they've done is mounted it on the roof, turned it over, it's still got titanium screws, it's got saltwater proof casing and all that, so it's going to be durable. It's got multiple different settings to display the infrared thermal imaging. It can see up to three miles. It works a lot better at night during the day, but you can turn it around 360 degrees with this little control viewfinder. So you might be able to see maybe like the roof. It tells you what degree angle you can go up, down, and side to side and you can choose the different colors that you want to see by sort of toggling between them here. It's a pretty cool feature in this aftermarket 12.1 inch touchscreen that they also add and allows you to do the climate control, this screen, video, music, Bluetooth, all your usual setups. Unfortunately, you lose some of the Jeep aftermarket trail systems, but you can download apps to this screen to sort of make up for that. The interior, however, still feels very Gladiator, even though it's been totally upgraded with this quilted leather all over the place, white stitching. Even the removable hardtops have gotten some quilted leather. This is marine grade leather, which should hopefully help it stand up to the thrashing that some Apocalypse 6x6 owners might give their trucks. SoFlo Jeep started off modifying Jeep Wranglers, but now bases the 6x6 on the Gladiator. And the owner Joe explained to me that part of the reason that that's great, other than the stretched 
chassis is that the Gladiator comes from the factory with Dana 44's front and rear, whereas the Wrangler base Wrangler comes with Dana 30's and 40's, which aren't as beefy. Now, <laughs> Apocalypse 6x6 then heavily modifies the drivetrain. It's got a Ram 3500 eight-speed automatic, a Gladiator Rubicon transfer case that allows you to choose between sending all those 750 horsepower to the rear four wheels or all six. You can't just choose two of the rear four wheels. Now, the transfer case then sends power to a Trix center axle that SoFlo Jeeps and Apocalypse 6x6 designed and engineered themselves that basically takes a four nine inch rear end and puts another prop shaft leading to the trailing third axle so that you can send power to all six wheels. The total extension is four inches of stretch from the front axle to the second axle, and then another 41 inches to the third axle, which allows for 40 inch tires, which if you do the math, one inch of space, but they can still articulate really well because they've got a hardcore suspension setup and they're basically solid axles working in tandem. There's someone filming me right now as I'm filming myself. Very Inception. Those 40 inch tires are the maxed out. They're 15 and a half inches wide. It's got 5.55 gearing in the differentials, which really helps route all that power to the ground because you don't want taller gears with such massive 40 inch tires. Let's give it one serious punch here. it searching for a little bit of traction but what do you expect this thing is massive i wonder if putting it into six wheel drive and just burning out with all six tires would be better but i don't really want to thrash this thing as hard as i can this is a about a two hundred thousand dollar build the base rubicon with everything done here starts at 195 add on another five grand for the hemi Hellcat as opposed to the LS3 Corvette V8. The rear view mirror does take some getting used to because it's a camera that's fixed and you can't sort of move like this to change the angle. It's just gonna show you the same thing. But otherwise, yeah, it's got a three inch lift. The suspension is actually stock Gladiator Springs at the rear, there's just four of them. And it's an Evo spring at the front. Despite how ginormous this thing looks, it's really only got a three inch lift over the factory ride height. And that's only one inch more than if you had the Mopar factory installed two inch lift, which makes a huge difference on the normal Gladiator. It's got custom fab control arms and brackets that allow it to maintain optimal steering geometry and camper and caster. And honestly, it drives like it's pretty much new. Part of that is because when they dropped in the Hellcat engine, they had to move around some of the accessories in the engine bay, including deleting the electric power steering. So this is real hydraulic based, pump based power steering, and it feels pretty good. It's amazingly light for such huge wide tires. And it really contributes to the feeling that this truck may have been factory original like this. So here we are in some dirt. You can hear some of my camera gear rattling around, but really it feels pretty steady. These are actually big bumps, even though they don't look that big from this camera angle, I imagine. But this thing just eats it up. Yeah, you can feel a little bit. You can definitely tell that there's a little bit more weight at the rear. But then again, a normal Gladiator almost feels too light at the rear sometimes, unless you're going up a steep hill and that's helping to push the bed downward. Now let's check out the turning radius. They've extended this truck by a fair amount, but you'll notice that at the tailgate, it's really not extended that much because they chop the bed twice. So the turning radius here is actually pretty good and it's actually shorter hanging off the rear tires than it would be if it was still a factory bed. And that allows for an even better departure angle. Here we are going through a couple more bumps. You can see it's moving around a little bit, but if I punch it, it just sort of glides over it all. Those Falcon monotube shocks do a pretty good job, though I would prefer probably the Fox remote reservoir setup 
just because I know that that would make this a little bit smoother and give it a little bit more ability to sort of soften it up. It's definitely got plenty of power. That Hellcat has been tuned. It's a great engine from Mopar, but it has been tuned. They say it's putting out 750 horsepower at least. They don't have a torque figure because <laughs> they can't put this thing on a dyno because no one has a six wheel dyno. But without a doubt, when you step on it, it's got plenty of get up and go. The transmission is an eight speed sourced from a Ram 3500. So that's beefed up much more than what would be in a Gladiator stock, which was an eight speed also made into the Rubicon's transfer case of four wheel drive which is why this one is sort of a special build for the Middle Eastern clientele. It still has front and rear lockers. The rear lockers do lock both rear differentials, so all four of those wheels are gonna be spinning. Now you'll see, I'm in here looking around because it's very hard to see stoplights when you've got this windshield cowl. A Jeep Gladiator's visibility is already pretty bad, and with the back window completely blocked, and this windshield cowl, it's only worse, especially for stops, stop signs and stoplights, and I end up hunching over quite a little bit. That's not great, but the whole point is for it to look sick from the outside, and they've already designed a new windshield cowl that's gonna be made out of fiberglass and hopefully save about 200 pounds of weight up high, and it's gonna have better visibility. So next up, let's see how this thing drives on the freeway. Gonna merge onto a freeway here in Fort Lauderdale. Hopefully there's not too much traffic and I can open it up a little bit more. Just listen to that supercharger whine. I don't think I've ever driven a supercharged car before and I have to say, I enjoy it. I had a turbo TT for a while and I love the turbo spooling up on that. This is just so much more linear. The power is direct and immediate. But really what's impressive, here we are, we're going 65. It's not the quietest car in the world. Yeah, there's some wind noise, what do you expect? And it does drive like a truck, but it doesn't drive like a crappy truck or one that's been messed with extensively and had its steering geometry totally ruined. You can let it go of the steering wheel, it tracks perfectly straight. It has good feedback, even if it's a little light from the hydraulic power steering which I obviously prefer to electric power steering, but it's really, it's perfectly civilized. It's not as aggressive as it looks. And that's a huge selling point for SoFlo Jeeps and Apocalypse 6x6. Even though the whole point is to look super aggressive, the customer base is gonna be wider if it's a comfortable luxury vehicle to drive in town which of course is where most of these are going to be driven. I'm really glad I got a chance to drive one of these things. It's really a very unique experience. I would like to take one out in the desert and see how it does. It's awesome to see a custom build with this kind of build quality and to see how well it drives. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed driving this thing. Thank you and once again, as always, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out.